In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how you can survive school when you're someone who looks different. So I actually thought that this would be a perfect time to make this video because I'm actually going to university in like just under two weeks now, um, which means that I've actually finished my school journey, if you like. I've got through all of my school years, so I have a lot of experience um, with what it's like to be at school when you have a visible difference. So I thought today that I would share some tips with you. Um, and I know that it is obviously like the first week in September, um, so a lot of you will be going back to school soon or you will have already started your new school year. So I really hope that this is a helpful video for you. Um, I'm probably going to be focusing a lot on sort of secondary school and what it's like to move up to there um, because I didn't really experience too many issues in primary school um, but hopefully it will be helpful for whatever age you are. So first I'm going to be talking about making friends. This isn't something that I really struggled to do in primary school because I feel like it's not something that kids that age really brought up and I know I certainly didn't bring up the fact that I look different um, so it was mainly secondary school when things started to get a little bit more difficult. So you're probably going to want somebody that's going to see past your differences and make friends with you for who you are. And I guess like my main piece of advice for this would be that if you don't want them to treat you differently, then don't treat yourself differently. I know that like I always used to feel like when I met new people I had to sort of explain why I looked the way I did. I don't really know why I felt the need to do that unless it was because you know I was hoping that that would mean that they were less likely to ask questions or anything like that but I think actually they probably wouldn't have brought it up anyway so the fact that I brought it up kind of made it seem like in a way it was like a big part of me but really you want to be able to show them that it's not a big part of you, it doesn't define you, there's so much more to you than the way you look. And so I think a good way to show them that is to not feel like you have to bring it up. If they ask questions, then maybe you could talk a little bit about it if you're comfortable doing so. Um, but just like right off the bat, it's not something that you really need to just bring up straight away. Um, because like I said, if you want people to just treat you no differently to anyone else, which you deserve, then don't treat yourself differently. Be yourself and you will make the right friends just by doing that. So the next big thing I wanted to talk about, which is something I think a lot of people worry about when they move up to secondary school, if they have a visible difference, um, is bullying. Now, this isn't something that I experienced much in primary school, uh, because like I said before, it wasn't something that me or my peers really thought about. But it did happen to me quite regularly throughout my time at secondary school and sadly more in like my first few years there. But I think one of the most important things to remember about bullying is that it says so much more about them than it does about you. It might be that they have their own insecurities or they just don't understand, but it's never the case that you have done something wrong or that you're not beautiful the way you are. They just don't get it. I know it's way easier said than done, but try not to take anything they say to heart because I really feel that a lot of the time bullying happens when someone is just uneducated they don't know what it's like to be you, they don't know why you maybe look the way you do, so it really doesn't say anything about you, so please don't worry about that. Um, and I guess this kind of leads on to the next thing I wanted to talk about, um, which is finding support. So obviously if you're being bullied, or just in general if you look different, you may have your own sort of worries, um, then I think it's really important to know where you can get your support and who from. I think most schools will have like um, a pastoral team where they have a lot of support in place already. So I think it's a really good idea to sort of get familiar with that, um, whether that's getting your parents to ring up before you go so that you know where to go if you do have any issues, or if maybe you have the opportunity to look round and meet certain people before you go, you know, that you'll be able to go to. Um, and even if you don't want to go and speak to a teacher at school, just someone that you trust, whether that's your family or your friends, they can help you out. You really don't have to go through it alone. Um, I know there were times when I kind of didn't want my mum to sort of interfere with things um, because I just worried that, you know, things would get worse and I thought maybe it's best just to leave it behind. But actually it then meant that things were just playing on my mind more and more and things were still happening. You know, the bullying wasn't getting stopped. So I finally realised that I do need to go down and report things um, or I do need to tell my parents. Even if it did get tiring having to go down every time an incident happened, it was really important that I did that because more often than not, the person bullying me did stop. 
So yeah, it's really important to try and get as familiar as you can with your support system at school. Know the process of how you have to report incidents so that when they happen, that's not something new you have to get to grips with. So this last thing I'm gonna talk about may not apply to everyone. Um, so I guess it depends on the type of visible difference you have, but uh, because I have a cleft open palate and amniotic band syndrome, that has meant missing quite a bit of time at school um, and that was due to like appointments because I had to go and see like the um, orthodontist, the audiologist, the cleft team uh, when I was a lot younger, the speech therapist um, and then also there was like the surgery on top of that so that meant time off for the surgery itself and the recovery depending on what the surgery was and so there's lots of different reasons why you may need time off school. Um, and I know this is something that I kind of used to worry about right up until I left actually, but there are ways to get around it or deal with it a bit better. So I guess one of the things you could do is try and get these appointments um, like in the holidays or like your surgery in the holidays. Um, that can't always happen and it didn't always happen for me. I did still end up missing time at school. Um, but my last three surgeries I think were done in the holidays. And I know you can't always decide when they're going to happen and I actually think that it sort of happened for me just sort of by chance. Um, but if there is a way you could get it to be in the holidays and you don't mind so much, I know it's not great having to miss like time um, of your holidays when you're going to want to have fun. Um, so I guess it does just depend on you really and what you feel comfortable doing. Um, but I think I've had one in the Easter holidays before, I've had an operation in the summer holidays and I think I also, my last one was done on New Year's Eve actually, but like I said it can't always happen. Then the next best thing to do would be to make sure that you inform your school every time that you have an appointment or you know you're going to be missing certain lessons and things like that because then they'll understand why your attendance is a little bit lower than usual. So um, throughout secondary school I used to email my teachers and um, I know it might work different at different schools and my mum would have to ring up as well prior to the time off I'd be having and yeah so I just used to ask for any work that I might have needed to catch up on or if there was anything really important that I missed. Sometimes my friends would be able to send me pictures or sometimes like the teachers would send me things I could do um, and they were quite understanding and if I had just had surgery you know they'd be like do it when you're better um, and yeah so I guess that's one of the other things that you could get familiar with doing. But something that I think is really important to note about this though is that your health is always going to be more important than your time at school. You always have to come first. So I know if your school's anything like mine was, they're probably drilling it into you all the time that you need 100% attendance and you're only gonna succeed if you do that. Um, but I, it just wasn't possible for me and it may not be possible for you. And that's okay. I think it's important to realize that at the end of the day, if you're not in the best health, you're not gonna be able to go to school like long-term and actually learn. So if you have just a bit of time off to get better and to have the treatment you need or the appointments you need, then in the long-term that's actually gonna work out better for you. So if you physically can't or mentally can't make it to school, take a break. It's so important to do that. And despite the pressures of having to get 100% attendance, which I always used to feel so guilty about, it's just not healthy to force yourself to go when you can't. And you just can't help it sometimes. So yeah, at the end of the day, don't stress too much about your attendance because you are and always will be way more important. But yeah, that is kind of it for this video. Um, I really hope you found it helpful and enjoyed it. Um, and I know that I kind of just shoved so much into one video um, and there's so much I could say about every single aspect of getting through school because when you look different things are going to be a bit more tough um, but yeah if there's anything that you do want to know that I didn't cover in this video let me know in the comments and I will see what I can do for you. Good luck going back to school if you haven't already and if you have I hope your first week has gone well. I know you're going to do amazing this year. Just believe in yourself you can do anything that anyone else can do. Having a bit of anxiety is okay. You know, I'm pretty nervous to go to university. It's a whole new experience for me. And if you're just starting secondary school or primary school or any year really, it is gonna be nerve wracking, but that is completely okay. And I know you can do it. So yeah, go smash it, have a great time. Don't think it over too much. Don't stress too much. Just take a deep breath. Try and remember a few of these points and I know you're gonna be amazing. I have a couple of little quotes that I do wanna share with you um, before the video finishes. So I'll put them on screen, uh, but one is, why fit in when you were born to stand out? Exactly, I love it. Um, and the other is, just be yourself because everyone else is already taken. There is absolutely nothing wrong with being different and I hope you can see that as you go through your school journey. 
So good luck and I will see you all very soon. Bye!